Well, good morning and welcome to church today. And uh, I'm sure most of you have heard the news. Um, this is probably the last time we're going to be gathering in church for um, for a month. So uh, let's make this service a real blessing today. Um, I have I wrote the notices before I heard the news last night, so I'm going to say them anyway, and then with the rider at the bottom that. This all might change. So first of all, if you have done a shoe box, then thank you very much. I know some people, because they haven't been able to get out, um, have donated some money instead. I see there is a shoe box at the back. If you've done one and you haven't brought it, if you could try and drop it into church um, as soon as possible. I think and it, Linda's going to be taking them tomorrow. So if you've done one and it's at home, perhaps you could just drop it in before our commemoration service this afternoon and we'll make sure it gets to the right place. The commemoration service this afternoon is going ahead. Um, hopefully those of you who would like to come have given your names to Sonia. Um, we've kept to this because of the limit of numbers. If you would like somebody's name read out, somebody who has died who you would like remembered, the list is at the back of the church, so please make sure that you put the name on the list before you go today, because um, I like to take it home and prepare it before the service this afternoon. Um, if you do come later and you haven't managed to put the name on, don't worry, we can add it, but it would be more helpful if you could put it on after the service today. Remembrance next week. We've done a risk assessment. If it goes ahead, we will have a 10 o'clock service. Well, we won't be having a 10 o'clock service next week, I don't think, um, which would have been at all six. That would have been followed by an act of remembrance after the service at the Orsip Memorial. We were going to have an 11 o'clock act of remembrance outside in the churchyard here, which Max was going to lead, and then Vulvan was going to have the two o'clock act of remembrance um, at the memorial in the Vulvan churchyard. That was, that they were the plans. They haven't specified anything about remembrance, but I am guessing that they are not going to be going ahead as they were. I think Max even had the scouts coming to the view in various groups of people. So I'm assuming that if it does go ahead, it will be a very limited group of people. But I'm really sorry, I don't know. I'm guessing that the Church of England will issue um, their guidelines following on from the government um, at the beginning of the week. So I will try and keep you posted about that. Um, Similarly, we were going to have Forest Church on Saturday the 14th at 4 o'clock at Bulvan Churchyard. Um, I don't know what will happen there. I know that for interment of ashes, they say no more than 15. Whether I'm, I'm guessing that we probably won't be able to have Forest Church, but again, I'll let you know. At least we've got a week of grace, so I can let you know on the notices for that. I think most of you who are on our database received our electronic questionnaire a week or two ago. Unfortunately, there have been some problems with that, um, so that people were not able, they filled it in, but it wasn't accessed. Um, it's because we used a free version of Monkey Survey and it's, uh, it stopped people um, doing it after a certain number. So we have used a different provider now, which means everybody will be able to do it. So that survey will be reissued this week so please, thank, well, thank you to those of you who did fill it in. If you did, please fill in the new one because the one that you filled in before is now uh, wiped off, is obsolete. So please, could I ask you, even if you filled the first one in, to do it again when you get it this week. We would like as many people as possible to fill that in so, so that we get a good picture um, of where we are. Some of you received a paper copy of that. If you received a paper copy, that is exactly the same. You don't need another one. Please could you let me have that back as well. Um, it's important to get everybody's views, uh, paper copy and electronic copy. Right. Um, I've just got some notices here. Sandra. Oh, gosh. Sandra's just walked in and it's so great to see her. 
Hello, Sandra. It's, it's lovely to see you. I need to have a, have a quick word with you, Sandra, at the end, because I've got some notices and I can't find where to take them, but um, we can talk about that at the end. Um, this message is particularly for Horndon people. We have had, well, we have been having Ocean Church on a Tuesday and a Saturday morning, and we would like to continue with that. But the government guidelines say that if churches are open, it is for private prayer only. I know that some people have been coming on a Tuesday and it's developed to, um, into something of a, of a chat um, and a social occasion. And unfortunately, with um, the guidelines as they are, um, we won't be able to have it open for a chat, but it will be open for private prayer. So um, those people who were hosting um, won't be here to kind of post it, it will just be open for you to come in and say your prayer. So could I just ask that, that you do respect that. Um, because we've got the service at 4 o'clock today, we do need to clean the church after that service this morning. So are there one or two people who wouldn't mind staying behind after this service just to give it a quick um, clean with the, the antibacterial wipes, etc, etc. Judy, Max, thank you very much. Um, that's really kind of you. I think that's everything. Um, I've got some stuff here for Horndon Ch Orsett Church and some stuff here for Baldwin Church, but I don't think we've got people who are able to take that, so I, I will deliver that to the various places on my way home today. Um, A large part of it is um, glow sticks for our outside Christmas services, which uh, were in place for Stingle and Jam Jars for Forest Church. So uh, we may not even be able to use them, but uh, let's pray that this coronavirus subsides and uh, we will be able to have some of these services. Anybody got anything else to share before we begin our worship? No. Well, it's it's lovely to have you all here. Can I invite you to stand if you're able? Let us worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lord, speak to us, that, that we may hear your word. Move among us, that, that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers, that, that we may learn to trust you. Amen. Amen. Please sit down, and we're going to have a time of confession now. So let's just spend a few moments bringing into our mind those things that we need to say sorry to God for. Maybe something we've said or done, or something that we haven't done that we really wish we had. So let's just be still and bring into our minds those things. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and prayer. And we say together the words on page four. Lord, Lord, Lord God, we, we have sinned, sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew the right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and his peace, now and forever. Amen. And now we pray the collect the special prayer for today. 
God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age as we rejoice in the faith of your saints. Inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we're going to um, listen to Psalm 149. We don't all have a Bible this morning, so uh, I will read it, but perhaps you could join with me in the, um, the ending at the bottom of page four. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its maker, let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing, make a melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats, and two-edged swords in their hands, to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters and their nobles with chains of iron, to execute on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all his faithful ones. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Amen. And now Max is going to... Uh, Bring our reading to us and uh, bring our words to us. chapter 5, reading from verse 1 to 12, the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountains. Have I turned my mic on? You can hear that, can't you? Yes. I'll start again. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountains, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and then he began to speak. And he told them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those that are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the word of the Lord. And speak to God. So, it's all saints today. Saints Day. We're celebrating the saints. And uh, what was interesting this morning, I caught a, uh, a small portion of uh, David Nicky Henshaw's uh, address this morning uh, on Saints Day. And, and he starts off saying the problem with saints is these days is that uh, we think there's something very special. Um, who are dead. But according to the, uh, according to the New Testament, um, we're all saints. And what I think we've got here is Jesus giving us a recipe for what saints would actually mean. So I'm going to go through it, then I'm going to have a comparison with that and the way the world sees things. And uh, we'll try to draw that together with a plan of action at the end, Sean. So we can go forth from this uh, church, saints. In, in the service of our God. So, those who know God will be born in spirit. Those who know God 
will mourn not just for their own losses, but for the losses of the world and the people around them. Those who know God will be meek and will live in humility. Those who know God will hunger and thirst after righteousness, not just for themselves, but for the people around them and for the whole world. Those who know God will be merciful. And those who know God will become pure in hearts. And for all those things, those who know God will become peacemakers. However, when you act like that, the world will persecute you, it will revolve you, it will utter evil rumours about you. But if it does, rejoice because you know that you are working with the one creator God. So, why, first of all, would the world get so angry if we start to act like this? Let's break it down. If you are poor in spirit, you're not arrogant. Now, a lot of the world around us is built on the arrogance of a person proclaiming their own worth and looking for their own good through greed, all sorts of other things. Why would the world pick on you and be more for others? What do we mean by mourning for others? For those who have had to leave homes through violence, war, those who have no homes, those who have lost their whole families, those who have lost businesses, livelihoods, communities. If we mourn for them, the world says no. The world needs indifference because the world is based upon other people losing out that those who have may have more. Why would, the, why would the world be against you if you're meek and humble? Well, that means you'll be downtrodden, you'll be pushed down. The world will become aggressive towards you because you will accept it. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be standing there and saying, you can't do that. That's unethical. And the world will say, but this is what we do in order to maintain our lifestyle, in order to maintain what we believe is the root of our well-being. You can't tell us we can't. And if you're pure in heart, that means that you will be loving even those who are saying those things against you. But the world will demand that you become heartless, so that you will hold in your edge to all those things that you think are important because the world doesn't. The world sees important as making my business gain so much more money. Not just making ends meet, not just covering costs, not just making a living, but making more of a living every year. Shareholders demand more from their companies that they're holding shares in. Investments demand increase. That is consumerism. It means that we have to sell more, we have to make more, and that's based on greed. That creates a culture of me, my investments are more important than yours. My country is more important than yours. My neighbourhood is more important than yours. My family is more important than yours. This is the me culture. I am the most important person in this world. The desire for success in this world means that you need to base your success on money, career, greed, ambition, and selfishness. So what the world does, it brings people who are poor in spirit, those who walk, those who are meek, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who are merciful, those who are pure in heart, those who are peacemakers, they're branded as losers because they're not making what the world thinks we should be making. And that's the recipe for Satan. When you start to live as Jesus expects us to, here's our king in this, these are not there as an idealist idea of what the world will be like after he comes back. This is a template for how we should be attempting to live in this real world in which we live. We are the counterculture. It's nothing to do with drugs or hippies. We are the counterculture. We are counter to the consumerist society that we have created. So we will be persecuted, we will be bullied, we will be reviled. They will 
us that evil rumours about us. And we'll make up things. But what we need to do is rejoice and be glad because we know that if we are going to do that, we are on the right track to bringing about what God wants in this world. And he wants us to be his saints. So in the name of all the saints, including ourselves, we come before our Lord in prayer and we pray, Lord, revitalize your church. Lift our hearts and fill them with the love that puts away all the arrogance and the bullying and the meanness of this world and helps us to be poor in spirit, to mourn for others, to be meek in the face of aggression, to hunger and thirst for righteousness, to be merciful, to be pure in heart, and to seek peace. For then we will be blessed. We pray this in the name of the man who is divine, who spoke these words of the Sermon on the Mount. Amen. Amen. Max for your words and in a moment um, Judy and Sonia and Felicity are going to sing to us but, um, just following on from what Max has just said about and, and as Christians sometimes we are persecuted for, for doing what we feel is the right thing um, and I don't normally speak politics from the pulpit or from the lectern but as we were away in half term, this issue of school uh, of meals for children who would normally have um, free school meals was on the radio so many times. And there was an article in the Church Times this week, actually I, I cut it out to bring it and I think I've left it in my bag in the car. Um, and there was there were some words from the Children's Society there about how many children um, are in poverty and don't receive um, you don't, don't have um, a meal in the holidays and there was an encouragement for us as churches to um, write to the government to encourage them to, um, to provide meals for children who are eligible for free school meals during the holidays. Um, I'm not standing here telling you to do that, you must do whatever is um, on your conscience, but if it is something that you feel passionate about, um, and if you would like to see my article um, from the Church Times with um, comments from the Children's Society, then um, I'm very happy to show that to you, Matt. Could you stand it and put it online, please? Yeah, I could, couldn't I? I could. I'm not sure if I know how to put that onto the um, uh, membership coordinator thing yet. Yeah, I, I, I will find somebody that does help me. That's a good idea. I'll kind of scan that. But, um, <laughs> I, I do encourage you as Christians to stand up, to <clears throat> write letters to politicians, the government, if there are issues that you feel as Christians we should be um, standing up for. Um, but that was just something that was on my heart and I felt that I should, should share that this morning. I think there were several things on Radio 4 last week with, with people saying that they had, as children, been in that position themselves. So we'll leave that there, and now um, we're going to have um, 10,000 reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, which Judy, Sonia and Felicity are going to sing for us.
in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. We, we believe, believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We, we believe, believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We, we believe, believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This, this is our faith. faith. We, we believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And uh, from singing to us, Son, who is now going to come out and uh, lead us in prayer. Let us pray. Today we remember all authorities that are developing strategies to contain and deal with the virus, and those in the health services who may be risking their own lives to care for sick people. Here in Thurrock, we especially pray for the situations and procedures that have been put into force to try to halt its spread. Help us all to be responsible in the things that we do in our lives to prevent the spread of the virus by taking heed of the recommended precautions and avoiding situations which may make things worse. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. And where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. May we not so much seek to be consoled as to console not so much to be understood as to understand, not so much to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we awake to eternal life. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our we pray today for our government in these difficult times, still struggling to do what is right. May they be men and women of integrity, guided by a desire for public service, love and truth. We pray especially today for the people of the Philippines who have experienced a typhoon yesterday. We pray also for the injured in the Turkish earthquake this week. Lord, in thy mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray today for the sick in our benefice and in the wider community. In a moment of silence, let us bring to mind all those known to us. Lord, we beseech you to give the sick courage and hope. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all those recently bereaved as they come to the service this afternoon to remember their dear ones departed. May they gain solace and comfort in your word. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sonia. And now let's join together in saying the Lord's Prayer on page six. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand if you're able for the peace. And when we share the piece today, we're going to use the sign language. And I would like to, when you do that, to say, peace be with you. And I'm going to use this particular piece today um, because it speaks of us being the body of Christ. And uh, as, we, as we face the fact that we won't be meeting physically for the next few weeks, let's remember that we are the body of Christ across this village. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and build up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you.